changing things up today. I wanted to talk about electronics prototyping. There was a project I worked on a little while ago where I needed to use this chip specifically, and there wasn't an Arduino library for it. So I wanted to step you through my process of understanding how it works and how I was able to integrate it with an Arduino. So this little thing is pretty neat. It's an RFID chip with an I squared C interface. That means I can communicate with it with my phone and an Arduino. Now, there are quite a few of these out there, but what sets this one apart is its energy harvesting capabilities. It can pull power from a phone and source that power to a microcontroller and various sensors, albeit not a lot of power, but enough to take a sensor reading and spit it back out to my phone. So I could have just ordered this and just read through the data sheet to get this up and running, but ST also sells a, um, a demo board that just fully works right out of the box. For me, I understand things a lot better if I can look through something already working than trying to build something up from scratch. So on power up, it displays a voltage reading, and then I can step through and display a message that was programmed from my phone, and then I can do a temperature reading just from the room. I can also read the message stored in memory from my phone. So let's take a look at the I squared C bus to see what's really happening here. I've got my scope set to its default setting so you can see how I'm dialing in the signals. Uh, first thing I'm doing is turning on both probes. Uh, probe one is on the clock line and probe two is on the data line. And I got one of the probes connected to ground. Uh, you can see when I turn on the power supply that both signals jump up to 3.3 volts. And that's a good thing. That's the pull-up resistors doing their job when the lines are in a non-driven state. When I click the mode over uh, to display the message, you can quickly see the signal run across the screen. Uh, you may be tempted to hit auto setup, but that's usually hit and miss. So try dialing in the signal yourself. So the first thing I do is move the trigger level to somewhere between zero and 3.3 volts. About halfway should be fine, but kind of wherever. It looks like I'm looking into too narrow of a time scale to see the full data transmission. So I'm zooming out just a little bit. When I think it's close, I do something called a single capture. This is when the scope sits and waits until the signal crosses the trigger level and then begins recording a screen's worth of data. It takes a few tries to get the window just right, but eventually I get it. Yep, that looks like data to me. Next thing I want to do is turn on the decode function on the scope. So not all scopes have this function. Well, most do, but most want to charge you an extra fee to enable it. This one happens to have it enabled from the factory. This can decode I squared C, CAN bus, UART, and a SPI bus. So I set it to I squared C and then tell the scope which probe is attached to which signal line. And boom, uh, you can see the data. The 0x53 you see is the address of the NFC chip. The 0x lets you know it's hex and 53 is the value in hex. The write and read command is from the perspective of the master device. In this case, it's the ST microcontroller controlling the whole parade. So you see the ST controller writing a couple bytes to the bus and then requesting a few read bytes from the bus. It all looks Greek to me, but the bits at the end look suspiciously like a payload message. So if I switch the readout to display ASCII instead of hex, I get my message. Brilliant. So let's see how this message changes if I program a different message into it with my phone. The payload obviously changes, but let's compare.
All right, so I think I'm seeing a pattern here. Let's do a third message just to make sure. Great, so it looks like the bus is sending memory locations it would like to read from. More on that in a sec. It looks like 0C stores the length of the message, plus three. It looks like the message is stored starting at 0D. And it looks like the message terminates with FE. All right, so let's see what that probably looks like in memory. We first requested two bytes starting at 0000. 000. Then we read in two bytes starting at 0009. Then we read two bytes starting at 0008. You can see the overlap of the 54 in this chunk right here. Then we read in eight bytes starting at 0D. So there are other messages we can write to this chip, including websites. So let's try to write a website and see how it responds. Interesting. So we still read E140, but it gets to the next chunk and just stops. All right, so here's what I think is happening. I think 54 encodes that it's a text message and 55 encodes a web address. When the ST thing reads that it's a web address, it stops reading and just says, nah, man, I can only display text messages. So let's try a few other modes. All right, yeah. The NDEF protocol can encode a bunch of things and each one has a different piece of data stored in 09 and 0A in memory, but they all have E140 at memory address 0000. So here's what I think is happening. The controller first pulls the NFC chip to see if there's an NDEF message stored in memory. If so, then it checks to make sure that it's a text message. If it passes that check, then it checks to see how long that message is. Then it requests the message length of bytes plus three. Then looking for an FE at the end just to make sure it's the end of the message. Not sure what the extra two bytes are for. So this app also lets me read memory of the chip. So for funsies, let's see how close you were and fill in the blanks. Not sure what these extra pieces are for, but it seems to me they weren't necessary, at least for text messages. So this video is getting a little long, but now that we know how the memory is arranged, let's see if we can start reading this data and manipulating it over in Arduino, but that's gonna be in the next video.